The new commanders, Babor, Margaret, and Heraclius are finally in game, which means that we get a look at what the real skills are for these commanders. Stick around. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms gameplay episode from your very own Shappy Gaming. In the original Lilith reveal of these commanders, they didn't show the real skills. So if you saw previous videos on the release of these skills, anything that's more than about three days old, it's probably not accurate. So today they finally dropped these new commanders in game and we get a look at what these skills actually look like. And if you watched some of my previous video, or maybe it's coming out tomorrow, where I broke down all of the different, you know, potential four C's units to be viable in game, this is definitely going to change things. So let's take a look at what Margaret's rocking with and we can go from there. So Margaret's active skill for three seconds, range normal attacks from this commander's troop, deal 20% extra damage and deal additional skill damage. Damage factor of 300 reduced by 50% if not within melee range of the target. And of course that goes up to 500. So what does this mean? This means that, long story short, if you're in ranged position, you are dealing about 250 damage factor for three seconds, which isn't great. It's not terribly substantial, but let's remember these are siege units you're using and you're using them at a distance. So could be worse. I think the 20% extra damage is kind of nice, uh, but we'll have to see. On to the next one, Conqueror Queen. So this is a passive skill, and this is going to in increase the attack of this commander's siege units by up to 20%, and their march speed, again, by up to 20%. Ranged attacks from this commander's troops have a 10% chance to increase its normal attack damage by up to 20% for three seconds. So this is kind of a standard skill. This gives you your attack and your health for your, or your attack and your march speed for your siege units. Honestly, you typically want health, but the march speed is probably going to be nice especially if you're rocking with T5 trebuchet out there. On to the next. We've got in range mode, this commander's troops deal 5% up to 20% extra range skill damage. When their troop deals skill damage, it has a 30% chance to reduce the target's march speed by 30% for three seconds. This effect can trigger once every five seconds. So this is kind of a big deal. And this is kind of a big deal because as a ranged attacker, you're shooting these bolts at a target. And if they cannot escape your circle of death, then you're going to be dealing a lot more damage to them. This skill really makes Margaret much more viable than really any of the others. I think the mark speed is fine, but once you're actually set up in ranged tower mode, you're not doing all that much from there. But between the normal attack damage bonus and the slowing, this is going to be a big deal, at least I expect it to be. Now, the only bummer here is that the skill damage is really not terribly much, but we'll have to see how this all shakes out. On to the fourth skill, obedience is power. This is a passive skill, which is in going to increase the attack of this commander's troops by up to 5%. Uh, and it's interesting here because we've got attack of this commander's troops, but the upgrade preview says damage bonus. Range normal attacks from this commander's troops have a 10% chance to reduce the target troops defense by 20% for three seconds. And that goes up to 40%. That's a huge debuff. So that's a huge debuff. And this is where things get really interesting because a 40% defense damage reduction is valuable when you're a ranged position. But I think the real value that's being missed here is the fact that if you have Margaret set up on one side of a river, and then you have your Nevsky going around the other side, you can slow the target and then they have a 40% damage reduction debuff, which you can then take advantage of with your marches on the ground. This is really powerful because you can now have support commanders from afar, which previously you had to throw Ethelfled in the field or Trajan in the field, and I don't know about everyone else, but I target those marches fairly often. <laughs> This is going to be a little bit more difficult because you can't touch these commanders. Last but not least, we've got her uh, new skill, which is her expertise, which increases the defense of this commander's siege units by 10%. When taking damage, the commander's troop has a 10% chance to heal itself, healing factor 500. So why does this matter? This matters because, as we saw in the previous update, spoiler alert, 
you can now take counterattack damage when dealing ranged damage. But the counterattack damage is all you're taking. You're not taking skill damage, you're not taking normal attack damage. So this healing of 10% or 10% chance to heal of damage factor 500 may very well offset the damage that you're taking from the counterattack. So we'll have to see how this works in the field. But overall, for a siege unit, I mean, market's pretty good. And you do have this support tree, which I do want to highlight here. The support tree has a skill which allows you to actually slow targets. So if we take a look at another commander who has support, I can show you guys, it's this skill which is going to be really valuable. After using an active skill, reduce march speed of nearby enemy troops by 5%. So I wonder if this is going to apply to Margaret. If it does, then you're talking about really slowing troops a lot, in which case your other marches are probably going to be able to pick them off. On to our next commander, Babur, another engineering commander, which is fairly crazy to me to ever see this happening in game. So he deals skill damage to a target troop damage factor of 1200, reduced by 50% if not within melee range of the target. That's fine. They haven't really defined what this whole melee range is, but my expectation is with this commander, with these troops, you don't want to be in melee range. Uh, so you're dealing about uh, up to a thousand damage factor, which is pretty big. It's way larger than what Margaret's dealing. So we'd love to see that. They have a good synergy off the bat. Now he gives you a siege unit attack bonus of up to 15% and a defense bonus of up to 15% as well. And their commander deals 10% more normal ranged attack bonus. So this stacks, I would expect, with the other 10% buff over here, which is uh, pretty good. So now you've got, oh, this said 20%. So now you've got a 30% normal attack damage buff, which is as you're shooting those bolts out. And you've got up to, I think it's 30% attack for siege units. Why does this matter? Siege units and attack are going to work really well together because health is mainly viable when you're in the field and you want to last longer. Defense is, is valuable when you're getting swarmed. If you're in a ranged tower, the odds that you're getting swarmed should be fairly low unless you set up your range tower poorly. And you don't really need to have very high troop health because all you're doing is shooting out damage. And this is where attack is going to be especially important. For these range units, I do expect that attack is going to be what you want because you want to be dealing as much skill damage, normal attack damage as possible. And so that's why this attack stat is going to be so effective. Next, we've got in range mode, this commander takes up to 10% less damage from normal attacks. And ranged normal attacks from this commander's troop have a 10% chance to deal additional skill damage of up to 500 to the target troop. This effect can trigger once every five seconds. So again, a really nice skill from this commander. I'm actually pretty intrigued. You're putting out a lot of skill damage. Even if you're not necessarily in melee range, you're still dealing 1,000 there, you're dealing another 500 there, that's 1,500 skill damage. That's nothing to scoff at. I think that's that's more than you see double C dealing. Uh, and this is range. So again, you're going to be having that massive damage output for a longer time. Yeah, that's more than double C. For a longer time, and you're not taking damage from the targets you're attacking. Again, this is so important because in a field battle, your marches are getting attacked constantly and you're losing troop health as you're in the battle. So your skill damage output is going down pretty much every second that you're fighting. With ranged combat, it's not the same. You can consistently put out this 1500 damage factor, which is a huge deal because they can't attack you unless they march around wherever you're hiding from. So this is going to really disrupt things. And of course, if they didn't need to get any better, we've got the health of this commander's siege units increased by 20%. And when taking damage, this commander's siege units have a 10% chance to gain up to 40% defense and a 5% increased damage of all damage types for three seconds. This effect can trigger again once every five seconds. And last but not least, the passive skill, which is the expertise, increases the attack of this commander's siege units by 10%. Whenever they use an active skill, they, they're troop will gain 50% range per second for the next three seconds. This effect can trigger once every five seconds. So the expertise is essentially adding on to that attack, which again matters so much because you're going to be using skill damage and ranged attack normal damage 
which is really what you're, you want the attack stat for this. And you're now getting all that extra rage per second, which is going to make it so you're popping off these active skills even faster. And again, you, there's pretty much no cost to using them. I am genuinely curious as to how this is all going to work because there is a lot of damage output coming from these units and I never thought that siege units would be viable in Rise of Kingdoms. Again, I've been playing for such a long time, but if you pair these two, I, I, <laughs> I don't know, guys. I think between the fact that there are such great armaments for siege right now, and you've got these two great siege commanders, if you need a fourth march or a fifth march, again, this should not be your primary march. I don't think this should ever be your primary march. You need to have, you know, I would go for the big three first, and then I'd go for this. But this is definitely viable. If you have a support march right now, I would be wondering if maybe I should drop the support march and go for the range combat. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And just a friendly reminder, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button right over there, bottom right hand corner. And drop a like on the video, hit the bell. It all helps me out a ton and it helps other people see this video. So I'm thinking that engineering may actually work, guys. I mean, I never thought I'd say it. But these skills are actually really good. And everyone thought that the original release ones were, were you know, I dismissed them. But this, this is, this is going to be interesting. Okay, last but not least, we have Heraclius. Heraclius is a leadership commander, so he's not in that whole engineering release. But he may be useful. So he deals direct damage to up to five nearby target troops, damage factor of 600, which goes up to 1200, and damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15%. That makes sense. Uh, this skill also grants this commander's troop a mighty shield for five seconds, damage factor of 1200. So this is nice. You're putting out a lot of damage and you're gonna be tanking a little bit, which is nice. Uh, he increased the health of this commander's troops by up to uh, 30% and when serving as a garrison commander normal attacks from this commander's troops have a 30% chance to increase its own counterattack damage by up to 30% for three seconds 20% of gar garrisoning your own city so this is mainly for garrisons at least that's what I'm gleaning from this skill it looks like they're trying to build them out to be a city garrison I'm not crazy about that I think personally you, you shouldn't be taking city rallies unless you have over 100 million power in which case, I don't know if you'd go for this guy. Next, we've got increases the skill damage of this commander's troops by up to 20%. And when they're using an active skill, their troop gains a mighty shield again of up to 400. And if garrison in your city, it is up to 500. So again, they're really pushing this, this uh, city garrison. That said, let's talk about how this can actually be useful otherwise. You've got a fairly large skill damage set here. You also have... Uh, a skill damage bonus of 20% regardless of if you're garrisoned. And then you get this mighty shield of 400 even if you're in the field. So I, I'm not convinced he has to be garrisoned. That said, I think the counterattack damage uh, is, is really going to be valuable as a garrison there. This second skill kind of just sucks. <laughs> it it, it kind of sucks because you've got the 30% health, but that's about it. And our fourth skill here, we have increased the defense of this commander's troops by up to 15%, and its attack by, again, up to 15%. When garrisoned in a stronghold or your city. Whoa! The defense and attack bonus only count when garrisoned. That's a mistake. They completely just killed this guy. Wow. Okay. When their troop is attacked while it has a shield, it has a 30% chance to deal direct damage to the attacking troop, damage factor of up to 1,000. Uh, this effect can trigger once every eight seconds. So the direct damage factor is fine. Again, you're gonna be a little bit tankier dealing uh, counterattack damage. Uh, this is attacking troops, so if you're getting swarmed uh, and you have five marches attacking you at once and you have a shield, you're actually gonna be dealing this damage factor fairly frequently to those marches. So, so it's fairly tanky. Maybe you put in with Honda, this first thing here where your defense and attack bonuses are out the window, that's a shame. I think if they made this so this applies on the field, then he's viable because you got that health, you've got damage, and you've got shield, which gives you the tankiness. But we'll have to see. 
This commander's troop takes 10% less damage from normal attacks. If this commander's troop contains at least three different unit types, damage taken is reduced by an extra 20%. He's really tanky. Uh, he's really tanky. Again, I'm thinking Honda, maybe uh, YSS in the field. YSS is really good in the field. No one talks about it. I think that that could work. Maybe you could put him with Ethelfled if you want. Personally, I don't like him. Uh, I'm not going to be maxing him. I don't really see who he's going to work with. I guess you could have Her Heraclius YSS as your city garrison if you really want. Personally, I'm not sold on him. Let me know what you guys think about these new commanders in the comment section below. I hope that you've enjoyed. This has been the updated commanders, all that good stuff. If you have, drop a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Shappy out.